It's the first 30 days of the Go Gravis store being open, and I'm gonna talk about the numbers. Well, not the specific numbers, but we're just gonna talk about generally how the first 30 days have been going, opening a new bicycle shop, and uh, very interesting observations I've made. But anybody who knows me, I came from the cycling industry, well, military before that, then the cycling industry, customer service manager, and then was the CEO of the Sufferfest training app, and then moved on to product manager at Wahoo Fitness, and then took some time off and realized I wanted to start my own company and create a brand called Go Grava and spread adventure throughout the land. So before we actually get into how the first 30 days of the bike shop is gone, I'm gonna go through just some topics about the cycling industry as a whole and how much turmoil everything is still in at the moment. Uh, we've, 2023 was a rough year. I knew that going into 2023 when I formed the company in January of 2023. Uh, I kind of see these, uh, these times of turbulence and things like that as opportunities to relook at how uh, the cycling market does business, how bike shops do business, and see if I could create a way to do it in a manner that's more beneficial to the customer or the consumer in general or the cycling industry in general. So the industry is in turmoil. What have we seen recently? Well, Kona Bicycles, who sold uh, to another company, I don't remember the name, but in 2022, uh, they were at Sea Otter, the bike show in California. And the day of the bike show, they were told by the headquarters, of the company uh, to pack up and uh, come back to work. And now we've learned that uh, the company that purchased Kona is looking to sell Kona. So that is troubling. And not only that, just heard the news that Stages is going under. Stages makes the power meter uh, pedals and some really fantastic indoor training bikes uh, you can use for spin class and stuff. Just their bicycles are amazing. I've actually ridden on them uh, before. So it's sad to see those go. So you as a consumer, I mean, really right now is a great time to buy a bicycle because there's just sales everywhere, everywhere, all over the place. For me, starting a bike shop is not great. It is not great, but I knew this coming into it. So sales, let's talk about sales specifically and what we're seeing online. We're seeing a lot of online sales, a lot of online discounts. I mean, you can go online right now and get wheels cheap, bikes cheap, everything really cheap. What that means for me is it's very difficult to set up new accounts. Now, before we get into setting up new accounts and talking about that and those sales, the bicycle industry is no different than any other industry when we're talking about business, wholesale, uh, distributors, and things like that. It's all kind of runs the same. To give you an example, my brother works in HVAC. And with the uh, HVAC, HVAC business, you have a company like Train who makes heating and cooling systems. Some of the uh, best ones out there are top of the line systems, but Train, as a brand and a company and a distribution network of these heating and cooling systems will only select people in regions to work with their systems. And the reason they do that is because train doesn't want five guys in a town all selling train and then having to compete on their own brand price. Because you know it's probably gonna happen when you have multiple people carrying the same, same product, they're probably gonna undercut each other a little bit, which kind of devalues train, devalues the brand. Cycling industry is exactly the same. So if you ever want to open a bicycle shop, you got to kind of know that what your local market has available. Because if you have a saturated market, let's say you're in a smaller town, there's five bike shops, they could have all the brands locked up. And the distributors are not, you're not going to get any accounts with any of these people, these distributors or these brands, because they're already selling in a shop nearby and they don't want the bike shops competing on their brand over price. So I'm not butthurt about any of that. I kind of knew that coming in. That's why I went to South America and found my own brands and imported them specifically. You know, we are a bike shop plus here at Go Grava. We have a third party logistics company, a 3PL. We are bonded to import from anywhere around the world. So we can pull in some really unique brands and do some really unique things. And not only that way, I have other plans that I'm working on now. And that's why I haven't been making a lot of videos because I'm refreshing my knowledge on XML coding and what you need to do, drop shipping. So, yeah. So with that sales, go back to, we'll go back to sales. So let's say I have bike company X that I really like, and there's only a couple of companies I wanna work with. I, I don't have the resources to buy 100 bicycles from somebody. So again, I have no negotiation power 
with any of these companies, you know, it took everything I had over the last 16, 17 months to get to where I am now and get the stock I have now. I mean, we carry Merino, F Duarte, we have Turn Bicycles, Turn's been fantastic. They're e-bikes and folding bikes. And then uh, we're working on a, just a couple other companies and then that's gonna be it. Really, uh, we're gonna keep it kind of limited for now to the gravel, bikepacking, off-road adventure bicycles. But you see this gravel bike online, let's say this company, bike company X is, was selling the bicycle for $3,300. Carbon fiber, dream bicycle, really great components, $3,300, but now it's selling online for $2,600. So this is how it works. The company from bike company X, it costs them so much to produce this bicycle. It's the cost of goods sold, cogs uh, for the company. And off of the top of that, they have to make a certain margin on that price of that bike to keep the company alive without going bankrupt, to pay their employees, to pay their overhead costs, the shipping, logistics, the customer support. It all gets really expensive really quickly. Uh, and again, this advantage that I have as a one-man op right now uh, doing something is my overhead is really low. Um, so then when they look at taking on a new bike shop, when I come to them, they're not really interested because they're already taking a hit on their margin. That $3,300 bike that they would have sold before, I would have captured a certain portion of that margin and then the brand would have captured a certain portion of margin. But now my margin as a bike shop has evaporated or the brand itself has to take down the price of their bicycle down to the cost of goods sold or just above it to give the bike shop a margin so they can move bicycles. Uh, so the bike company X would rather sell their bicycle online than to deal with a new bike shop like me, which I completely understand. I completely understand that. There's no hard feelings. Uh, it's just business. This is just business. And so I completely get it. Uh, but it makes it difficult going for some of the companies that I want to go for because they're already selling online and they don't want to share a margin or they not that they don't want to they can't share a margin it's just really difficult right now so what I'm seeing in the bike shop right now in the first 30 days is I'm seeing very interesting things um, you know, I get a lot of people coming in and asking for things uh, that I don't have, and I don't have a way for them to get them, and I know when they walk out of the store, they're gonna go to amazon.com and buy them. Uh, I think I can change that. I think I can do something with the website where I can point them to a product, they can buy it from the website. Uh, I could drop ship from a wholesaler and right to the customer's door or in the shop uh, to get things done. So I'm excited about that. You don't see a lot of bike shops doing that. Uh, at all. I don't know that many of them do. Mostly the conversation is I can order it for you. It'll be in the store next week or something like that. And then they'll say, oh, don't worry about it. And then they go out and buy it from Amazon. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is a lot of people buying bicycles online, very apprehensive to come into the store uh, because they're like, well, I didn't buy it from you. They feel bad about it. And I'm like, I don't care. Bring your bicycle in. No offense, dads out there, but uh, you know, sometimes when you buy a bicycle, it's not as easy as you think to put together, especially if you have disc brakes and multiple gearing. Uh, you know, for instance, like Turn, they don't sell online, they sell through a bike shop. And there's a reason for that because it's complex electric bicycles. And when you get those things in, there may be some damage on it. Uh, maybe the brake rotors are bent. I know how to re uh, fix the brake rotors. Uh, maybe the shifting is just adjusted a little bit differently when it comes out of the box. I can fix your uh, gearing for you and then get the bike rolling exactly how you need it rolling uh, out of the door for you instead of you struggling with it at home. So I've actually had multiple dads and people come in with their BMX bikes or different types of bicycles and I just charge them a flat rate fee for setup. You know. And not only that, I have a bike being shipped to my store that was purchased online by the customer. And I just char I charge $200 setup fee. That's basically it. Your, bu your bicycle will come here, I'll unpack it, I'll put it together, I'll make sure it's working great, and there you go. Um, doing a lot of repair work on older bicycles, I'm seeing that. Uh, uh, that's kind of holding me up a bit is, uh, is the repair work, because I'm just trading my labor for uh, fixing bikes. Um, got a lot of old BMXs coming in, uh, repacking the bearings uh, and the wheels and the crank, which is not too difficult. Uh, so I'm seeing that and then, uh, and then, yeah, so 
It's re really interesting, but the first 30 days, let's get into that, the first 30 days of the bicycle shop being open. So when we talk about a business and operating costs, let me just put things in categories for you. So I usually say top line, which is just from the income statement, you know, with a corporation or whatever you're investing in, but really it's gross sales. So you have gross sales, uh, which I call top line, and then you have the overhead, which is pretty much everything you need to uh, run the company, including all the expenses for the employees, salaries, and things like that. So I'm gonna just gonna split overhead into overhead minus, which is not my salary, because I'm not making any, I haven't paid myself yet. Uh, so we're not making enough money to pay myself. So overhead minus is what it costs to run this company online and in store. And then hopefully this summer, you know, we're, we're making enough money that cycling starts kicking back up and starts going. And uh, I can make enough to pay myself because I got to get paid at some point. So the first 30 days, we top line sales, gross sales covered all my overhead costs. Fantastic. I mean, I was surprised at that. I thought I was not going to hit that number uh, at all, uh, but it was mostly due to the local community around me and the marketing and advertising that I did around the local community uh, that got us to that gross sales number and that top line that covers our overhead. But I'm operating on a gross margin. So when we look at gross profit, gross profit only covered about 50 to 60 percent of my uh, overhead, overhead minus. And so even though top line covers expenses, I'm still operating at a loss, which is expected in the first 30 days. Matter of fact, it's usually expected in the first couple of years of a business is that you're kind of burning through cash, uh, but hopefully we're not going down that road in 2024. Hopefully things start improving with cycling. Uh, but yeah, so I was really impressed. Um, I'm also getting involved in the community. Uh, I am, since I'm the only person operating the store right now, because I can't afford to pay somebody, I'm not gonna hire somebody until I'm confident I can pay them a salary uh, uh, to do the work that I, that I need them to do. And yeah, so I'm getting involved in the community and uh, doing all this social media myself. The website, I built it myself. Uh, uh, I've had help with design work, I've had help with contracts, but the logistics is all me. Um, I'm pretty much just a one-man show, just dragging an idea up a freaking hill. And uh, I have three other partners uh, that provide assist, small assistance here and there. So again, it's never just me. I always have, there's always people helping me in these different segments and areas. Like my wife went to the Philly Bike Expo to help me display Merino and F. Duarte and showcase that to the East Coast. And uh, my brother provides invaluable assistance in business discussions. Um, the brand was kicked off with a brand designer who used to also work at Wahoo, uh, helped us with the uh, logo and things like that. So none of this stuff, I could have never done any of this stuff by myself, but 95% of it I could do. And then now I'm learning how to, um, going back and refreshing that memory is on XML coding, uh, so we can figure out how to do uh, drop shipping in the store. So people don't have to worry about not having something, because if we don't have it, they can order it from us. Uh, because every every consumer, think about it, as a bike shop, I don't understand this. Like, somebody comes into your store, they want to spend money with you. And, uh, but they have timelines and stuff they have to meet. Like, they can't wait a week or two weeks for a chain. So, uh, instead of going Amazon, if they just, if you just point them to your store, and then it can be delivered to them, or they can pick it up in store within a couple of days, just like Amazon, most cyclists are gonna do that. They're gonna spend money with you and not with Amazon. I think everybody understands that, but uh, not a lot of bike shops, I don't see a lot of bike shops moving towards that model or trying to deal with it at all. Maybe it's just outside the scope of their understanding. Uh, I guess I have some advantages of a previous product manager that dealt with software specifically um, over the top of the, uh, helping build the Wahoo X app and then being a product manager for a short period of time for Wahoo Cloud the Wahoo Cloud systems uh, that I kind of understand what the capabilities are and what you have to do to get there. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the next project I'm working on. And then I'm also going through the F Duarte stainless steel gravel bike, testing that out. I want to do a video on that. Uh, I got the Turn Quick Haul e-bike uh, that is absolutely fabulous. Uh, I cannot wait to do a review on the Turn Quick Haul because I think more people could really, really benefit with that bicycle that's sitting over there. That's what I'm looking at right now. 
Um, I probably saved $220 in gas this last month just riding my bicycle to work. And uh, yeah, so that's how the first 30 days have gone. I'm optimistic because it went better than I thought. I mean, if top line can cover overhead, yeah, we're still taking a loss, but it's not that big of a loss. And uh, yeah, hopefully if there is turmoil in 2024, I got to find ways, inventive ways to stay in business because I think the cycling industry is going to change somewhat uh, in the coming years. Uh, and uh, people are going to be rethinking or corporations are going to be rethinking how they're doing, how they're doing business uh, uh, and stuff like that. Because I don't think just shipping things or buying a bicycle online is really really the total solution because uh, I got a lot of people coming in needing help building their bicycles they bought online. So uh, yeah, anyways, won't bore you too long with me just rambling on. Uh, I hope you learned something there. Again, if you wanted to start your own bicycle shop, uh, my suggestions is make sure you have plenty of money up front because it's going to cost five times as much as you think it's going to cost and uh, understand your market. Understand who's selling what in your area. Uh, because that does influence what you can actually stock in your own store. Uh, but yeah, have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later.